Good morning, everyone. No matter where you are, we are glad that you are here to worship with us this morning at Our Savior Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader, and uh, Pastor Kristen Rice of uh, Purdue Lutheran Ministries is over at Holy Trinity this morning, worshiping with our fellow community over there. But as we uh, begin to worship, just a, a word reminder for those who are here in person, if you would please sign the pew pads so we have record of you worshiping with us today, that would be greatly appreciated. And then an invitation for our worship time together. As we worship and hear our scripture today, a question to ponder. How do we welcome today's prophets? How do we welcome today's prophets? Uh, others as well, but especially today's prophets. Will you please stand and join me as we begin with our call to worship. Happy are we who hear the joyful call to worship, for we walk in the light of God's presence. Let's worship God together, celebrating who God is and all that God has done. For God is our strength and our protection, the one in whom we trust. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, give us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely in the name of Jesus. Forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Will you please join me in singing our gathering hymn as we gather at your table in our red hymnal, hymn number 522. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred, nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to Oh, 
spirit, help us, some and other guests, to share that feast where triumphant love will welcome those who had been last and least. There no more will envy blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Holy God, your faithful love towards us never ends. It is as sure and dependable as the sky over our heads. We praise you. We've gathered together in this place to offer you our worship and our thanksgiving, to declare to any who will listen that you are our God and we are your people. May your spirit be at work among us as we worship opening our eyes to the light of your presence in this place. To you alone, faithful creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our word for the day. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 5 to 9. Through a symbolic action, Jeremiah insisted that Judah, Judah and the other and all the surrounding nations should submit to the king of Babylon. Hananiah contradicted the word of Jeremiah, who in reply insisted that Hananiah's rosy prediction should not be believed until it came true. God confirmed the word of Jeremiah and sentenced the false prophet Hananiah to death. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the, of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. 
But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in, he and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. We will read the Psalm 89, verse 1 through 4, and 15 to 18 responsively. You read the bold verses. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your presence. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. The reading, second reading is from Romans chapter 6, verse 12 to 23. Sin is an enslaving power which motivates us to live self-serving, disobedient lives. Sin's final death is payoff, or sin's final payoff is death. We, however, have been set free from sin's slavery to live obediently under God's grace, whose end is the free gift of eternal life. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then should we Sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient to the heart, to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things for which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, your, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. chosen race, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The gospel of the Lord. Grace Grace to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'll invite any of the children who would like to come up for a children's message. We'll check online here and see if we have anybody joining us from home. Good morning, good morning. How are you this morning? Are you good? You alert? You, yep. You good? All right. Um, so, I brought something with me today. You guys probably have one at your house too. I bet you might. Do you have one of these at home? Is it upside down? No? We're good? Can you read that? What's it say? Welcome. Do you know what welcome means? It means you're invited to come here. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's actually, if we look at the origins of the name, it's like you are desired to be here. We are pleasantly happy that you are here. You, we desire that you bring your presence into this place, right? Right? So we always say, all are welcome as we come into church. And as we do that, we got to mean it. We have to mean it for all people. The people that we like, some people that we may not agree with, people that we don't get along with. But God was the first one to welcome everybody to the Lord's table, right? Jesus always welcomed people. So maybe we should get a welcome mat. For the church, where do you think a welcome mat for the church would go best? In front of the front door? In front of the back door? Yeah, where? We should put it in front of the door because it's a mat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to say we should put it right in front of this table because all are welcome here. And if you've noticed... We placed our actual baby Jesus here, right here too, right? So he's got his arms open wide, and we are welcoming all people to this table because that's Jesus' table. That is God's table, and all are welcome in front of this table to receive the love of God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the welcome that you give each one of us. Help us to welcome others as you welcome us too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the one who created us, the one who has saved us, the one who sustains us. All in the name of love. Amen. So if I were to give this sermon the title, it would be Beware of False Prophets. And and though it's a trite, overused phrase, it's relevant and true, especially in our culture today. Jesus says, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. What? What does that mean? 
How do we welcome a prophet in the name of a prophet or as a prophet? And what's a prophet's reward? A prophet's reward is not very appealing if we look at how most of the prophets that we know of in how their lives ended. Some, maybe most, ended up secluded and alone, not making it to the promised land. I guess Elijah, I mean, that was pretty cool. He ended up going to heaven in a chariot of fire. But for the most part, a prophet's reward? It's not what we think of as a reward at all. Maybe we should begin asking the question, what's a prophet? A prophet is one who is connected with God, who communicates with God, and and they bring God's message to God's people. There are many who claim God's love for all and yet continue not to share God's love with others. They use God's word to exclude instead of including others. They fall short of showing justice for all people. It's as if they reason that because of God's love, they can do anything they wish. And they are mistaken. I mean, our actions have consequences. And more importantly, what we do matters. And it matters to God. As Dr. Corey Driver puts it, favor with God is one thing. Salvation is another. God will not withdraw salvation, mercy, and grace. God will show anger. And this is throughout the New Testament as well as the Hebrew Scriptures. If people neglect the things that Jesus cares about and taught us about, which are loving God and loving neighbor by doing justice. So let's look at our first reading from Jeremiah. I mean, and by itself, it's, it's vague, or at least seems out of place. So let's look at the backstory to appreciate this small section that we're given through our lectionary more fully. Much of this sermon I want to contribute to Dr. Corey Driver. That the Israelites under the rule were under the rule of the Babylon or the Babylonians. And they were wondering when Yahweh would restore them and unite them and bring their vessels back to the temple, bring back all the exiled. God spoke to Jeremiah and told him specifically to make a yoke out of straps and wood and place it over his neck and then make one for each of the kings of Israel. Now they go to this conference, all the leaders and their their seconds, And Jeremiah was to go and tell the Israelite kings that this yoke represents the yoke of being under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. God has given all the lands to him, to King Nebuchadnezzar, as God's servant. Listen to this from Jeremiah 27, verse 8. But if any nation or kingdom will not serve this King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and put its neck under the yoke of the King of Babylon then I will punish that nation with the sword, with famine, with pestilence, says the Lord. Now you can imagine the controversy of, throughout the Israelite nations that this message created for those who thought of themselves as the chosen ones. After all, why would God do that to God's chosen? Well, maybe. Maybe there's something God had in store for them in learning humility? Something that comes from learning about a new culture and their similar traits within? Something to discover about working together with someone different than ourselves or themselves. So Jeremiah goes out and delivers this message from God at the gathering of all the Israelite leaders to be under the yoke of Babylon. The prophet Hananiah doesn't like what Jeremiah is prophesying and begins to claim that Yahweh spoke to him and said in Jeremiah 28, verses 2 through 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke 
of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back all of this place, all the vessels of the Lord's house, which King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place King Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Basically meaning that they should all go to war against Babylon. Then we hear the response of Jeremiah that was read for us today, where he basically said, yeah, I hope you're right. I, he throws up his hands, amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill these words. But just like the prophets from the past who prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many kingdoms and countries, let us wait in peace and see who speaks the true words of God. Now, the prophet Hananiah, you notice how he doesn't have a book in the Hebrew Scriptures? He takes the wooden yoke off of Jeremiah's neck and breaks it, saying, this is how God will break the yoke of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon from the neck of all nations within two years. Now, Jeremiah leaves at this point because he's fed up with Hananiah. God must be too. For God tells Jeremiah the following in verses 12 through 16. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go to Hananiah. Thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars only to forge iron bars in place of them. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I put an iron yoke on the neck of all these nations so that they may serve King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And they shall indeed serve him. I have even given him the wild animals. And the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you made this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I'm going to send you off the face of the earth. Within this year, you will be dead, for you have spoken rebellion against the Lord. Now both Hananiah and Jeremiah claim they were speaking in the name of God. How do we know who is prophesying the truth and who is not? How do we determine between God's will and what we think or what we want to think is God's will? It's remarkably difficult today. We live in a day submerged in information everywhere we turn. And it's a time when the media and news correspondents spill more opinion than fact. When ratings are more valued than honesty. When our elected officials wish to cling to their power and push personal agendas more than serve all who they serve and who they represent. When leaders in megachurches preach a prosperity gospel rather than a gospel of love, justice, and inclusion. When the Supreme Court makes debatable decisions on equal rights for all people. Still today, Many will persuade people to trust in a lie rather than God's word we know in Jesus Christ. And everyone is affected by the information reported and repeated over and over and over again. And, and because each of us has our own worldview, our own family system, our own cultural influence, this information is interpreted in a way that reflects sometimes our own views. And, and not God's view. But I believe in 
our gospel today, Jesus is warning the disciples to stay on message when they go out and share God's love for one another. He says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes God, the one who sent me. That is foremost for the disciples. Welcome is the first step to relationship with God and one another. Whoever welcomes the disciples in their message of a loving God, a, a God who is with them and who sustains them, a God who is present and willing to go through the dark valleys and up to the mountain peaks, whoever welcomes the message of an inclusive and all-encompassing God are those open to relationships with others despite their differences. Prophets will come and go, and the true ones will find their reward as well as the false ones. Righteous people will come and go, and the, the true righteous will find their reward as well as the false ones. We are called to welcome all and to be envoys of God's love as prophets, as righteous folk, and as disciples. And to do so, we are called to set aside substantial moments to get out of the loop of all the media around us. Set aside moments to read scripture, to spend time in prayer, to be in time of silence, to quiet ourselves. Outside of our constant bombardment of information and to center ourselves in the holy, in order to combat the daily submersion of our conscience to false prophets and rhetoric. When we do, then we can connect to the holy. God's love does not give people the right to do whatever they wish in God's name. Rather, God's love invites us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And this begins with what might seem insignificant. Jesus says, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the least of these little ones in the name of a disciple as a disciple, truly, none of these will lose their reward. God's salvific promise is eternal. For as we were sinners, God sent God's only Son to show love and justice through grace and mercy. And we have a response to that gift. The gift is not dependent on our response. The gift is freely given. God is always the one who acts first. But as we decipher prophets from false prophets, let's question those who deliver messages of exclusion, injustice, and racial supremacy, even individual supremacy. And let's listen to those who promote welcoming the marginalized, welcoming the widow, welcoming the alien. Let's give ear to those who seek justice and inclusion and give ear to those who proclaim that we should love those who we don't really want to love. Those are the true prophets. And then we are called to offer a cup of cold water to the ones we don't wish to love because in doing so, we ourselves become the true prophets. Amen. Will you please join me and stand as you are able, singing hymn number 676 out of our red hymnal, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. of your tone 
As you have sought, so let us seek your straying children lost and lone. O lead us, Lord, that we may lead the wandering and the wavering feet. O feed us, Lord, that we may feed your hungering ones with manna sweet. O teach us, Lord, that we may teach the precious truths which you impart, and wing our words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. Oh, fill us with your fullness, Lord, until our very hearts overflow in kindling thought and glowing word your love to tell your praise to show we please join me as we profess our faith using the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for creation, for the Wabash River and the Wildcat and we creeks, all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for firefighters and all in paths of brush fires in California, for all experiencing the effects of smoke, air pollution, and poor air quality, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions, for cleanup and recovery following tornadoes in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and uh, yeah, Arizona, God, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. We pray for this nation and all nations, for peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, and Syria, for presidents, governors, and legislatures, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for all victims and wounded in shooting events, especially in Kansas City, Willowbrook, and Saginaw, for those who are ill, especially 
Janet, Jason, Phil, Shirley, Linda, Adele, Jeff, Denise, Victoria, Jennifer, Jeanette, Suzanne, Shelby, Kevin, Nancy, Anne, Mary, Sean, Mayor Dennis, Jane, Robert, Tom, Peter, Ruth, Megan, and Crystal, for all near death, or for all who grieve, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer camps, summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Trinity, one God, you show us the splendor of diversity and the beauty of unity in your own divine life. On this coming Independence Day, make us who came from many nations with many languages, a united people that delights in our many different gifts. Defend our liberties and those whom we have entrusted with authority, the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, who have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take that moment to share that peace with one another as you feel comfortable doing so. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you who are viewing from home or other places. Peace. It's great to see you all online. As you finish up, you may be seated. We'll continue our service, but at first a word of thank you for all that you do and continue to do by sharing your time, talents, and gifts, your treasures with our Savior Lutheran Church and Purdue Lutheran Ministries. It uh, is wonderful to be here, and um, it's because of you that we are able to do so much throughout our community. So we'll continue to ask to bring those ties and share your gifts um, in by bringing them to the office or mailing them in or even using the QR code on the screen or in your bulletins as you are able to do. We appreciate all that you can do for us. Um, also, as we continue with our meal, there will be a time where I commune the assistants and then there will be a time that we commune those who are at home or those who would like to commune in your pews and then we'll invite those to come up um, to receive communion at the altar. There are gluten-free wafers as well as um, grape juice within the inner circle of our tray. So if you need any of those, just let us know. And we will continue with our offering prayer. If you would please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave 
and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise Your name and join their unending hymn. of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, O Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. And unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you, with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So come to this table, which now extends into our homes. You who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You have been here often and you who haven't been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, just like the rest of us. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Any of you that would like to commune in your pews or those at home, please prepare the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Now the wine or the juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now we'll invite those that like to come up to the altar, please.
spirit open my heart to the joy from pain of living as you love me I love in receiving and God replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my coldness and fear to your grace I know surrender. Spirit, open my heart. To the joy and pain of living As you love me, I love In receiving and in giving Spirit, open my heart Write your love upon my heart as my law, my goal, my story, in each thought, word, and deed, may my living bring you glory, Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love me, I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, oh, and my heart, may I weep with those who weep, share the joy of friend and neighbor. As I live from day to day, love will be my finest labor. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love me, I love. In receiving and in giving, Spirit, open my heart. Will you please stand once again as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So an invitation as we go into our week to look for opportunities to offer a welcome or a cup of cold water. To those we don't wish to love, because in doing so, we seek God's love and the word of the true prophets. Will you please once again join us in song, singing, loaves were broken, words were spoken, as found in your bulletin. Your body broken for us, 
by your wine of life outpoured. Jesus, feed again your people. Be our host, our life, our Lord. Loaves were broken, words were spoken, in a quiet room one night. In the bread and wine you gave them, Christ you came as light from light. By your body broken for us, by your wine of life outpoured, Jesus, feed again your people, be our host, our life, our Lord. Loaves are broken, words are spoken, as in faith we gather here, Jesus speaks across the ages, I am with you, do not fear. By your body broken for us, by your wine of life outpoured, Jesus feed us. Can your people be our host, our life, our Lord? By the loaves you break and give us, send us in your name to share. Bread for which the millions hunger, words that tell your love and care. By your body broken for us, by your wine of life outpoured, Jesus, feed again your people, be our host, our life. Receive this blessing, the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. You may be seated for a few announcements. Those on Facebook, thank you for joining us today. This concludes our worship today. Those of you on Zoom, stick around for more um, announcements if you are able.